Good morning, everyone. Janie here. Welcome back to my garden. It is such a big day today. I could barely go to sleep last night because I was so excited and almost a little nervous about today because it's just it's just kind of a big day. I know it's going to be a big day. So um, you can see my assistant in the background. Um, so today we are pouring the concrete, pouring the foundation for the greenhouse, which is really fun, but it's a little intimidating because like you got to get it perfect. The most important thing for putting up this greenhouse is making sure that the foundation is level. Now, there are three options that you can do, bas basically three options. If you have a very, very flat ground, you can put the greenhouse directly on the ground and you can kind of tie it down into the ground. And that's, that's fine. That'll work. But um, a better way is to actually pour a flat concrete foundation. So then you can either do the perimeter, which is what we are doing, or you can do an entire foundation, which I didn't want to do. Um, one, I just didn't want that much concrete. And two, I'll show you what I'm, I mean, I will eventually, <laughs> I'm not going to show you today, uh, but I will show you what I'm planning to do on the interior of the greenhouse. And I'm really excited about it. So I decided to go to, with option B, which is pouring concrete for the perimeter of the foundation. So yesterday, the boys, Milo and Isaac, um, the two guys who helped me out here around, around the garden with the really, really big stuff, they were here and they, we were working on leveling the area. And it took, it took a long time and we were using the two by fours to try and get it level. And then we were having a hard time basically is the, is the way to put it. We were having a tough time because, um, just getting it level is just, you know, and this is like a pretty level piece of ground here relatively. And we were still just having the hardest time. So luckily my dad came, he was planning to come anyway to help us. He came about halfway through the day. My dad is an engineer and he is a engineer. <laughs> he is, I mean, let me show you the plans that he made for me for the, the concrete frame. It is just, it's just crazy. I don't know. My brain just does not think the way that his brain thinks. So he came and he showed us how to do it the right way to make sure that we could get the frame perfectly level so that when we do pour the concrete, we can just take the, the concrete, um, what do you call it? Trowel and just scrape it off. And then the top of the concrete will be perfectly level. We are putting in rebar to, um, make the concrete even more, more strong. So, I don't want you all to kind of look at this and get intimidated by what we're doing today because I think that, you know, I think that this is an accessible project if you had help. I don't, this is definitely not a one person job. I don't even think this is a two person job, but this is definitely something that is doable for the average person if you really research it and know how to do it because the instructions are out there. I don't want you to take this video as a tutorial because I don't think I'm conveying it exactly it properly. My dad even said that he was worried that I was going to say the wrong thing and teach you guys the wrong thing. So I don't want you to take this as a tutorial, but you can kind of see what is involved with pouring the base of a greenhouse. Um, if, if you want to tackle it yourself, um, otherwise just kind of hire somebody to, to do it for you. So let me turn the camera around and I'll show you what we got done yesterday. And then today we are good. We have a couple more things to do for the frame and then we're going to start pouring the concrete, which is which is the part I'm a little nervous about, but it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Let me turn the camera around. All right, so here it is. The greenhouse is centered on the garden beds that I have right here. Um, so you can see this is where the door is going to be of the greenhouse. So just as a reminder, I am. I chose the Triumph greenhouse from Canopia. They gave me the amazing, incredible opportunity to try one of their greenhouses. And of course I went for the biggest, <laughs> the best one because it's so beautiful. It's like an orangery and it is just the most beautiful, beautiful thing. It is, I'm so excited about it. Um, I just, I can't even say how excited I am. So this is the frame that we started working on. We still have to work on this kind of, um, I don't know, door area, I guess is what I'll say. But my dad and I worked on these frames. We These are all done and leveled all the way around there like that. So how you do it is you actually put together the interior frame first. You screw it all in together and then you you um, nail in one stake. These are called form stakes. And the form stakes have holes in them. 
So you can screw in screws uh, and the screws can go directly into the wood and it'll it'll basically hold it there. So basically you start with one over on that side and then that's that's your reference point over there. And then you start leveling everything in relation to that reference point. If you're wondering what this is, these are all our tools that I just covered uh, just to keep the the dew off of them. It was easier because we knew we were going to come out this morning and work on them. It was easier than putting it all away. Um, so once you have this reference point, then you start kind of leveling everything and then you can kind of level it side to side as well, just to make sure everything's level so that once we do pour the concrete in this area, we can take the trowel, imagine this is a trowel, and just kind of go like that to scrape the excess concrete off. And then we know that the perimeter is perfectly, perfectly level for the greenhouse to sit on. Now, the hardest thing was these two by fours. These are 20 foot two by fours that we cut to size. They were a little bit warped. And that was, if it was too warped, we had to get on a new board. I bought plenty of extra boards just because, just because I thought that that would be an issue. But say for instance, this board right here was pretty warped. So what my dad and I did is um, basically we would use shims. Like here's a really big shim that we were using, which is just kind of like an angled piece of wood. And we would shove it under there until we were basically bending the boards. We had already um, screwed in that one and we had already screwed in that one. And then to fix the bow that was going down, we were sh kind of shoving the shims under until we could bend the board to get it even. And then we would screw in um, these these stakes right here. So I hope that that makes sense. Uh, but basically, if you do have bowing of the boards, you can adjust it a little bit. But if it's too out of whack, you just kind of have to start all over. So anyway, so this is the progress that we've made so far. Um, we are going to probably very soon, my dad is in his RV over there. He took his RV here <laughs> and my mom is coming today, um, later today. So we have to get these together. Isaac and Milo are going to be here any minute. Um, and I actually purchased a cement mixer. I know I cannot believe I purchased one of them, but I have other projects that have to do with cement. So I figured it might, it would just be easier if I just owned a cement mixer which is crazy to even say that. So step one is we have to put finish putting together the frame. Step two is we have to install the rebar all around. So basically I'm just going to have one piece of rebar all around the perimeter and that's going to give the concrete some stability which is really really important. Um, and then step three we will start pouring the concrete. Okay, dad and I are officially done with the forms. We've got them all level. We've got them all square. They're perfect, right dad? They're perfect. <laughs> so they are ready to go. So the next thing that we have to do is put the rebar in. And the way we're gonna put the rebar in is we're actually gonna float it so it's not laying on the ground. These things right here are called dobies. They're just little pieces of concrete that have wire in them. We will put this, these are all stuck together still. I gotta knock them apart. But we'll basically put one of these in each corner, put the rebar on top of it, and that's gonna float the rebar. I don't know what, an inch or so above the ground. And so that's the best way um, to put the rebar in. And that, again, that's just going to give the perimeter pour more strength, the concrete more strength. So we'll put the rebar in and then I'll come back and show you all. Good, good.
Yeah, see that? Perfect. Awesome. When you, when you attach them together, you gotta check the corners. Even that one over there. Okay, we've got the rebar arm all laid in. We did two rows of the rebar, and then these are the things called dobies, like I was talking about. And they're little two-inch pieces of concrete that have water, excuse me, wires sticking out of them, and they are just going to hold the rebar up from the ground so that when we actually pour the concrete, the rebar is sitting in the middle of the concrete. So, hey, bud. Hi. So Isaac and Milo right now are putting together the rebar with the wire. Dad's going to take a break because he's been working hard all morning. And then after that, we we pour, right? Yes. Next step is pouring. We're ready to pour. Ready to pour. And of course, at the end of a long, grueling day, my brain was not working properly and I completely forgot to film an outro for this video. So the cement had to cure for another two days and then we were able to take the concrete forms off and move on to the next step, which is putting the flooring in the perimeter of the concrete on the inside. So stay tuned for tomorrow's video where the boys and I do that. I hope you all enjoyed this and I hope you all have a chance to get in your garden today. Thank you.